I always talk to myself before I go in and deal with the medical world by saying, I am the one who is paying the money. I am the one that is hiring these people to take care of me. Therefore, I'm the one in charge. The Affordable Care Act passed by the Obama administration set a few precedents saying that it was illegal to discriminate based on gender identity um, and sexual orientation. When we talk about repealing Obamacare, not much of that discourse relates to the fact that it would be rolling back an enormous civil rights statute. It was the greatest expansion of civil rights since the Civil Rights Act in the 1960s. It brought those same sorts of anti-discrimination protections to the realm of healthcare. It's so easy to forget LGBTQ folks when we don't talk about pride or when we don't talk about like gay bars or you know things that people think of when they think of LGBT folks. Everything in healthcare is um, patterned after uh, gender binary, after cis normative uh, ideas and heteronormative ideas. Inherently, what the medical profession would define as risk is just like my life and the way I am. Mm -hmm. But they're, they call it risky. Mm -hmm. And that has always been to me like, whatever you define as risk is obviously not what I define as risk. And regardless, I get to decide how much risk I take. In my experience doing research, a lot of the issue around queer women's healthcare and information around that isn't that the information is bad, it's just that the information isn't there. Kind of like categorized as this like mystical group of people. Basically, we need queer women to make studies about queer women because what's happening right now isn't doing a good job. I, I don't think I, my imagination has gotten to the point of envisioning queer women's medicine. I want to. How do we remain stable and survive in this world that we're given, this world that we try to navigate?